I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Peggy Romero. I thank you for joining me today. I'm grateful that you found the time to tune in for this Saturday's episode. This week, we've been talking about worship. I'll bet the first thing that most of us think of when we hear the word worship is God. And I'm no different. I'm a Christian. I love God. It's a very big part of me, who I am. It gives me contentment and connection to everything. And I love to be content and live in peace, love, and joy. And the more I am connected to him, the more of that that I have. That kind of connection, that true connection, that is worship. Adoration, putting him first above all. But let us not be fooled. Try as I may, I'm not always connected, but I sure wish I were. One day, I may reach stage five of development where I do live connected all the time. I certainly would like to spend more time with God than I do. And I know I'm not the only one guilty of that. We're all connected to many things in the world. There's just so much here to enjoy and to see and to do and to be. But here's the thing. God knew that we would all struggle with this. Think about it. The very first commandment is, I am the Lord thy God, and thou shalt have no other gods before me. So the first one of 10 lets us know it's a big deal. To me, it says, hey, guys, it's really important, and it's going to be hard. Otherwise, I doubt he would have chosen that to be the first one. The most important thing is usually first on the list, right? So we have to keep it in front of mind. Things will be pulling us away and trying to divert our focus from him. It's a given, hence the first commandment. And in this big, beautiful world that we're here to enjoy, there are so many things that can take our focus. We can worship just about anything that we see as important. I mean it, anything. What do you value? What do you keep your eye on as a priority in your life? If we were to follow our hearts or follow our checkbooks, where would that lead us? What would that say about what is important in our lives? If we're honest, most of us could come up with a pretty long list. Of course, there's money, but there's so much more than money to consider. I know people can be narcissistic and actually worship themselves, believing they are above it all. The whole world revolves around them. There's also power, fame, heroes, celebrities, rock stars, and sports figures, or anything that consumes our time or energy. I hate to admit it that I've actually worshipped a man or the marriage that we were in. I put that as the number one thing in my life. Well, to me, that was a false idol, and God should always be number one in first place. So think about it. Oh, man, that's so cool. Wow, he's awesome. I adore him. I love that. I want that. Whatever that is, that can be a false idol, guys. It doesn't matter what it is. If we make it too important, it becomes your number one, then that's a form of worship. And that's not the right kind of worship. It's not the kind of connection that will bring you peace. Like I said, I'm a Christian. But I did read that Buddha was also against idol worship. I read that Buddha believed that it was wrong to put so much power in an object with it, which is stationary and devoid of life. He encouraged his followers to invest their energy in doing some actual work, work that would be beneficial to themselves and to the world. Well, that sounds good to me. Hey, I agree. Let's all do some actual work that will benefit the world. What a great idea. Do you realize how much contentment comes from doing something beneficial? Do you realize the amazing feeling when you accomplishment something that helps others? And I think that the less you get out of it yourself and the more you're helping somebody else, the more joy it brings. It brings us joy because we're connected. We're connected to the heart. And life is so much better when we live with purpose. I was wondering, are you aware of your purpose? And do you feel the pull in your heart towards something? Do you know what that something is? What on earth are you here for? What is it? Are you working in alignment with it? Or are you content with the status quo, just living day to day? So many of you guys might know this, but some of you don't, that we have what we call the purpose exercise in the community. And it's really good. It's an evaluation and it's free and it will help you if you take the time It's totally worth it because you can find your purpose, really, like your purpose for being here in life, and your values. When you coach with us, this is the first step. Remember what I said about the Ten Commandments? The most important thing is listed first. Same thing here. 
it is so important for you to know. That's why Bill has that in the community for you. So even if you aren't somebody who can coach with us, you can still have access to it. It's so useful because once you know, you know, and you'll be able to understand yourself a little better. Why do I do the things I do? Why do I want the things I want? Now you can begin to work aligned to that purpose. This will help you stay connected through your heart and you'll naturally feel more fulfilled. Things will begin to make more sense to you. Your life will make more sense to you. Your past will make more sense to you. You'll begin to realize that the people and things that happen in life are not happening on accident and that these things are ap actually happening for you and not to you. Have some faith. Do your best to know yourself. Get to know you. You will find that the universe has your back. God's got you, really. So stop chasing idols and the mimic, sorry, I can't say that very well, desires that we've been learning about. If you live on purpose, you will no longer want what others want just because they have it. You don't have to live in conflict and judgment. As they say, you do you. Dream. Make your own plans. There are much better plans for you to pursue than the ones that other people have. Plans for hope and a bright future. You can fulfill the desires of your heart if you'll stop chasing the worldly things. Stop worshiping stuff that doesn't last. Crying out loud. Why settle for less than the very best? You are no accident. You're here for a purpose. Find it. Go look for it. Figure out what it is. It doesn't matter how young or old you are. Connect with God. Connect to the universe. Connect to the Holy Spirit. Always do what you say you're going to do. Be a man or woman of integrity. Be the best you can be. Set your mind and keep it set. Listen, I realize it's not always easy to accomplish what we set out to do. I get it. Everyone wants to quit sometimes. There will be many roadblocks on your path. There are many boulders on your way up the mountain. We're no longer taking the path of least resistance, guys. That's not what we're talking about. And I know, I understand, it's usually really easy to start things, sometimes a little too easy. You can start a book, a diet, or an exercise program. You can start a new job, a new relationship, or get married. The starting is the easy part. It's the finishing that's hard. It takes a lot of commitment to complete a project. So it's very important that we stay in process and that we keep the end in mind. We must set our intentions for the right things and always for the right reasons. Also realize that life circumstances do change, so the right season is also equally important. If we don't have the right mindset, we'll lose our enthusiasm as soon as the going gets tough. We all understand this because it happens all the time. But hey, if you fall, get back up. If you slide down a little and you need a hand, ask for it. Just don't give up. If you aren't connected to your purpose, then you'll end up losing volition. But I say it's probably because we wanted what we wanted for the wrong reason. Maybe it's because of that mimic desire where everybody else has it, so you want it. But I need you to realize that if you just stay the course, things will work out right. Set your goals, set your plan, and then stay the course. This is why figuring out what you really want and why, connecting it to your purpose, setting your intention so that it's not just a random want is so important. It's all part of the process. We must set our goals correctly in order to succeed. You've got to connect to your why. In case you don't know it, we have a fantastic higher goal setting exercise in the community. I know firsthand it works. I've used it several times. And I know that it's helped many other people in the community and other friends and people that I've worked with, um, with proper achievable goal setting. So if you take the time to do it right, it will definitely help you figure out which things are worthy of your time and talent. Stop spinning your wheels. You've got to know what you really want and why you want it. Don't spend your life chasing things, trying to find happiness. Happiness is always internal. Always. You can't look for out, for happiness outside of yourself. Well, actually you can, and many people do, but they probably never find true happiness. And I kind of think that this is how people start idolizing and worshiping and becoming fanatical about things. I mean, we all need to believe in something. We all need to be connected to something, right? Well, let's make a commitment to be connected on purpose and not just willy-nilly. So here's my idea. 
let's all do some actual work that will benefit us or the world. We're all working at something. What work are you doing? Do you know? Are you aware of what you're working on? Are you working on yourself? Awareness is always key. So let me ask you, why are you worshiping that thing or person that you put in such high regard? Why is that up on a pedestal? Why do you idolize it? Why do you want it so bad? What does it really represent to you? What is your why? Do you even know the reason? What do you hope to accomplish? What is your real desire? Remember, guys, desire is the base of the ego. And we've got to get over desire. We've got to get out of the wants because they keep us in a state of lack. We're sending out the energy that we want. And that lack of what we want keeps coming back, just circling back to us. That keeps us stuck. We don't want to be stuck. <laughs> the want of control, the want of security, the want of approval, the want to belong, that's what's holding us down. That's what keeps us in the valley. There's no connection to your heart in the valley. There's no connection to God in the valley. There's anguish and turmoil and constant conflict in the valley. And who wants that? But I'm happy to remind you, you just need a second. Take a second. Find your still point. Take in a breath, a nice, long, deep breath, and you will be connected. Really. You connect to the vagus nerve. That connection gives you a wonderful green zone energy. Yeah, just like that. Out of the red zone and out of the negative energy. You just have to train yourself to become aware of when you're sitting in negativity. You just have to notice. You can if you try, and it will happen faster and faster if you make a commitment to practice. It really does get easier. Awareness. Figure out how to feel it right from the start of the conflict. I have a physical reaction when I get stressed. I used to feel it in my stomach, but by the time I noticed, I was already full on red zone, like sick to my stomach, ready to puke red zone. Really, honestly, it was that bad. And that was before I ever even noticed. Didn't feel it coming. But as I started coaching and working the steps of stress mastery, fortunately, I started catching it more quickly. I noticed that there was a lump in my throat. At first, I didn't catch it until the lump was actually so big that I couldn't hardly breathe or swallow around it. Yeah, I was stream, red zone still. But hey, at least I didn't let it go past that anymore and get sick to my stomach. I just kept up the awareness and breathing. I used the let go technique constantly. Finally, and with much practice, I started to notice my heartbeat thicken. I'm not sure that that's really a word but I could feel it on its way up to my throat now. So now I don't ever have to get that lump in my throat anymore because I notice it so much sooner. Everything takes time. You don't always notice the activation until it's a little too late, but with practice you will. Personal development is never instantaneous. I don't remember the last time I started spinning out of control like I did for most of my life. Like seriously, I was a stressed out mess until just a few years ago. Now I can feel my stress manifesting physically, and it doesn't feel good. I catch it long before it ever grabs me. And you can do it too. Practice makes perfect for all of us. The seven steps of stress mastery have changed my life in so many ways. I am connected so much more of the time than I ever was before. It's unbelievable. And you're just one breath away from connection too. One breath from disconnecting the limbic brain and that stressful negative energy. One breath from quieting the chattering ego. One breath away from calm. One breath from peace, joy, and love. One breath away from full connection to God. One breath away from worship. I am so grateful. Oh, what a beautiful gift. I have peace. And that's what I want for you too. Well, that's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show. Thanks again for tuning in today, guys. And as always, until next time, stay inspired.